Well, praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's sing this song together. And uh, I uh, have to tell you that uh, as I was uh, as I was praying and thinking about tonight's service and, and uh, the time together, I couldn't help but think of this one song to my mind. And so, Carol, uh, you know it so well. But we always, when we sing it for our devotions uh, in the morning, once in a while, we forget what verse is which, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put it in front of me, just in case I forget too. And a lot of lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Father God, as we come into your Thank presence you. today, we want to give you yes, thanks Lord. for all your blessings mm -hmm. to us, Lord. Too many to count, too many to even consider. But Lord God, we just we give you thanks for for caring for us in every way. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, especially Lord God, with just the beauty of the nature. Thank you with, uh, for giving us the senses that we have in our bodies, and, and thank you, Lord God, especially that you give us eternity because of Christ. And Lord, we just we bless you today. So receive this song as we sing it to you. Let it be your name when that is Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
So, um, you know, one of the things that was impressed on my mind this morning, too, is that we pray specifically uh, for uh, healing. I'm going to share something on Sunday that uh, only God and I know about. And I won't even share it on Sunday, but there was a part of the sermon that I deleted out of my notes. I, I didn't want to say it. And it wasn't because it was scolding or anything like that, but it was something that I needed to work on in my own life when it comes to pain. And uh, the Lord, Lord, I was speaking to the Lord about that in my office, and I can't say this because I can't. I'm not doing it right now. I, I don't want to be a liar. You know what it is? But you don't want to be completely truthful. Uh, not just all of us, but even a pastor, you know. And especially when you're preaching, too. <laughs> you don't want to be false. Uh, knowingly false. So I deleted it out of my notes. And it was only the Lord and I know what it was. But it's something I'm going to work on myself when it comes to my faith. Uh, and it's not, I don't believe it's uh, a matter that I don't have faith in God. But there's one area of my life I need to want to have faith in God. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. You know, you, you have faith in God, uh, but in some ways there's, there's something that you struggle with. Lord, want to your flesh gets in the way you know and uh and the spirits okay not yet but we're going to keep on working on it we're going to keep on working on it and you can put it back the there you go that's right that's right exactly so i i wonder if the spirit of god is actually working on me even now you know to uh change change the situation but uh why don't we take this just this opportunity right now before Pastor Ron uh, speaks and, and, and pray specifically uh, for uh, healing, physical healing. Uh, we all know that Ron is recuperating. Ron Lennon is recuperating right now. And so we want to pray. I want to pray for Karen Irwin, who's in the hospital. And uh, maybe one of the, I'll kind of keep bring this to you that sometimes we can believe, and I was talking to a gentleman today about, about supernatural healing. And uh, we can believe that the Lord can actually heal a torn rotator cuff deaf ear or something like that but something that is chronic in all your life then something but just you just end up living that you know. can i share something yes please. Can I have one time here when um prayed for healing and i have one i've got lupus and i've had chronic arthritis for years i've been out on that day Wow. I haven't had arthritis pain since. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I was in the hospital. Wow. And Sue, so what you're saying there, you know, is, is what I'm mentioning is about this chronic thing when you. After a while, you tend to live with things, you know, and you call it your cancer, your diabetes. It's not. It's not. 
You've got to, you've got to get rid of that. And I think that's what God is working to teach me right now. That's John, you've got to really, this, this thing that just hangs on with you. It's not sin, but it's a physical thing. Mm -hmm. You've got to, you've got to actually engage this faith that, faith that you have in you. Because he can do it. What did, what did God say to me when I was sitting on the couch? Ask. Just ask. Yeah. 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 So uh, why don't we do that? Why don't we pray right now? Uh, and the uh, Leanne pray, pray, pray for Leanne. Yeah. Pray for she, Leanne's she, health. She, also. She's, a, she's an emerger. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doctors. Uh, um, Ask for a sample and it looked like cranberry juice. So she's got something going on with her oh. kidneys or something. So oh. we need to definitely be praying for her. Maybe, maybe you know of someone too that that is not well and is battling chronic problems. I have someone come to my mind right now too. Uh, or maybe it's something else uh, you'd like to just speak out in prayer. But let me just guide us a little bit too. When we pray, we always want to pray more than just tell God our problem. Jesus said, ask, ask. So we ask. But as I said on Sunday, the two blind men, they had to get to the place where they were saying, believe in Jesus said do you believe so uh, let me be his voice for you right now to believe mm -hmm. to say this story and guess what God, you don't have to work it up you don't have to be freaky jumping around and all that you just have to engage that faith in Jesus Lord Jesus you do I believe you I truly do. Father, not only do I want to pray for Karen Irwin right now, but I want to pray for Marilyn Irwin too, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. We know the problems, chronic, chronic problems. But Jesus, I believe you. I believe you for these two women right now. Yes. I believe you for. I believe you. Oh, God, I believe you. Speak out loud, speak a prayer to the Lord right now on behalf of anyone or yourself. And we'll all agree with you. Lord, I pray for the issue with the son of his heart. Mm -hmm. And as he awaits us. Complaints with discussion, Lord. I just pray for your healing touch. Yes, yes, God. Upon him, Father. Yes. This is the administration of your power. Yes, Lord. In the peace. Yes. yes. I also pray for Marina, who has been in and out of the hospital, Lord. Father, I know that you want to heal her and that you want to give her problems. But uh, for us, we pray for her. Father, I lift up Becky, who Pastor Sandy brings to church as often as she can. Uh, you know, Lord God, the issues in Becky, Lord God. Lord, we're going to believe for her. Yes, we're going to believe. Yes. Supernatural healing right now. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Pray right now, Lord, for your presence in the midst of the Yes, Lord. Lord. Oh, God, we cry out to you, first, Father. Mm-hmm. Just collectively in the family, we're just all crying out. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just pray right now for, uh, you know, for, for Karen, Lord God. And, and God, we just, uh, we've heard some things, Lord God, where, you know, it, it seems to be kind of uh, negative. But Lord, uh, one thing we know, God, is this, that nothing is impossible for you. And so we just pray right now, asking Lord God and also praying, Lord, in the authority that you've given us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We just pray uh, uh, for Karen and those things that are afflicting her right now, Lord God. We just pray, Lord God, that those processes would cease right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Lord God, that her, she would have clarity of mind that her legs would be strong again, Lord God, that she'll be able to walk, she'll be able to walk without a walker, Lord God, and she will be uh, uh, strong. We look forward to the day where we should get to come back in this church again with a testimony, Lord, and we get to rejoice with her, Lord. God, we just pray also, God, for uh, Ron Lemon, Lord God, and the things that, that are afflicting him, Lord. You know what they are, God. And you know, and no matter uh, how things can have a title and and and, and and fear tries to rise up and tries to make things bigger and stronger than what they are. But God, you are mightier. You are stronger, Lord. And we pray right now for healing in Ron Lemon's body in the name of Jesus Christ. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord God, that he will be restored, rejuvenated, and strengthened again, Lord. God, we also uh, we also pray for, for, our, um, for uh, uh, my wife, Lord Leanne, God. I know, Lord, that she's been a little spooked right now about what's going on. But, Lord, we know what you can do. And, God, and that is what we trust in, Lord. Ourselves, we can do nothing, but we know what you can do, Lord. And we know how mighty you are and how strong you are. And those are the things that we will declare, oh, God. And, Lord, and just, Lord, as, as, as the people of Israel, Lord, marched around walls, Lord, there's a lot of walls that need marching around, Lord. And God, we just come against those things right now. We come against fear, confusion, anxiety, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those also are suffering with depression, Lord God. That you would just to bring down those walls, Lord God, and remove strongholds. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are your, your healing power is flowing right now into those who need it, Lord God. Lord, in, in, into my wife and blood, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We pray also, Lord God, and I, I, I pray as well, Lord, fill our church with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Make us to be responsive to the presence of God. And Lord, and you're not only glad to trust you, but also to obey, Lord, and do the things you call us to do, Lord. Strengthen us, prepare us, get us ready, train us up. And equip us, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Jesus, I Thank pray you. for Leanne that every organ in her body yes. that has been under attack, that has yes. been attacked, That's Lord right. God, yes. the enemy has tried to destroy in her body, yeah. that they would be made completely well, completely healed, Thank perfect, you, be it her lungs. Her liver, yes. her spleen, yes. the kidneys, her kidneys, bladder, her yes. any other organ that has mm-hmm. been attacked in the name of Jesus. I say, be gone. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of
Thank you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, on Sunday, I preached from Matthew 9 about those two blind men. Thank you. Yes, and you healed them. Yes, Lord. And just this afternoon, I was talking to my friend Timothy Clark, who is blind. Yes, Lord. Lord, <laughs> you don't change. You don't change, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord please mm -hmm. heal Timothy. Heal his eyes, Lord. I believe, Lord. I, I believe you, Lord. I believe you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, James. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are a healer, your strength. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the city for the end as well. Her, her uh, lymphatic system. Yes, ma'am. That, that, that perpetual attack yep. that has been on her lymphatic system. Yes, Lord. Be gone. In the Amen. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory. Glory. Thank you. Before we, before um before we get started, let's just give God praise. Let's Amen. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the Healer. You are the Prince of Peace. The Alpha and the Omega. You are Almighty God. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Lord Jesus, you are holy, Lord God. You are mighty. You are great. You are worthy of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Every one of our bodies are righteous. Lord God, you are your bar deliverer, strength. Lord God, we thank you and we give you praise. So I was when I was I was I was praying for for my wife and stuff, and the Lord told me that that this this is warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, an attack that's coming on, and, it, and she's just been going one thing right after another, and this is warfare. And so I was like, okay. So I went and I. I, 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 I prayed and I immediately I burst forth into my warrior song mm. in the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's it. I was marching around the room, and that's sometimes what we need to do is we do it. You know what? We don't know what to say, but the Holy Spirit does. Amen. And when they marched around those walls long ago in Jericho, they didn't go, could you please tip over? They marched around, and the Lord said, do it again and again and again. And they did it. And finally, that seventh time, bam, the walls came down. And they all shouted, and they blew a trumpet, and they glorified God. And that's what we need to do. It's, you know, it's, we're dealing with warfare. And so I, I want to encourage you, man. You know, when these things like this come, you don't know what to do, and you're beside yourself, and you're just like, I don't know what to do, Lord. You just break forth in a warrior song Amen. that God has placed in your heart, in the Holy Spirit. And you break forth in that song. And you're like, God is mighty. He is tearing down walls. Nothing is impossible for you. And that's what I was doing. I was just, you know, just declaring God's praise and how mighty, awesome God is. It's in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those of you who aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to do so. Yeah. So, uh, because I got to tell you, uh, there are times you feel like, I got nothing. But when you pray in the spirit, you got everything. That's it. You are on the same page with the Lord. You are, you are, you, you are declaring his will. You know it because you and, and God are, are in agreement that, 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 that in the spiritual realm that you cannot say in the physical. And you understand. And you are saying that you 
And you, so you have that connection. So what you're what you're praying in the spirit is in perfect uh, alignment with God's will. You're you are declaring God's will. Hallelujah. Thank well, you. I, I just go ahead. Give you share about my prayer life. I don't have a prayer list. I have never had a prayer list. I've never been led to have a prayer list. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when I go into prayer, I do not know what I am praying. Mm. Most of the time, and that disturbed me. What's wrong with you, Faith? Like I go in and I may start with some of the few things that come to my mind, and then it just turns into tongues, and I just that's all Amen. I can do Amen. is right. tongues. And I was talking with God about it one day, and he said, uh, where's the man? Don't you think I know how to pray right? Okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Yeah, you know, when I was when I was singing that stuff, you know, I could, it was like uh, my mind went back to um, in the Bible, you know, David's mighty men, right? And I'm sure, man, when they glorified God, they were boisterous, strong. God is going to win the battle, and that's all we need to be. God is going to win the battle. Hallelujah! No matter what we're going through, no matter how evil and vicious, no matter how the dark. How dark the darkness is around, the light is always strong. And the light always will, will defeat the darkness. Hallelujah. So, uh, before um, I, I start speaking, I just uh, I, I wrote, wrote, a, wrote, wrote a song today. I'm not going to sing it now, but I'm just going to tell you the words of the song Jesus, you're my rock, a solid place to stand when all other ground is worth a sinking sand. Strong is the foundation firm beneath my feet that keeps me secure in the faith that I believe. Mm -hmm. the chorus goes like this. You are my love. You are my peace. And more than life to me. In the fables and illusions, you're the light of reality. Jesus, my salvation, the one that I hold to, you are everything in my whole world. Mm -hmm. And then the second verse is, you are all in all. And you brighten my day. In your presence, O Lord, I will sing forth the praise to bring you the glory with all that's in me for all of my days and for all eternity. Praise God. And we need to remember that. Jesus, my whole world is you. He's everything to us. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to uh, uh, start uh, uh, experiencing God. I believe we're on chapter... Well, I'll be wrong three. And so we, before we do, let's uh, go ahead and, oops, that's my Bible. <laughs> you got to remember, it's the Kindle, you know, that the end downloaded for me. All right, praise the Lord. And we are, no, we're on four. Okay, cool. And so we're going to be God's servant today. Great. Before we do, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. You are awesome, Lord God. We love your word. Your word trains us, equips us, and gives us everything we need for works of righteousness, Lord God. Lord, you have uh, given us all the tools, Lord, that, that we need, Lord God, to follow your will. And I pray, Lord, that you will train us and help us, Lord, in your, your uh, word today, Lord, for us to be good servants of the Most High God. And so I pray right now, Lord God, that you will open our eyes so we see the truth in your word. Open our ears so we hear what you're saying to us. And open our hearts so we may apply the wisdom and instruction of your word to our lives. Lord God, again, we want to say thank you and we love your word. We love your word, oh God. And we hold it in high regard. We thank you, Jesus. In your holy name, we pray all these things. Amen. All right, so... Uh, today we're in experiencing God. We're going to talk about being a servant of God. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, is, is when, when we talk about being a servant of God, I am reminded the ones I like in the Bible were the servants of the Most High God. And those were individuals who were able to uh, accomplish uh, great things. Moses was a servant of the Most High God. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, uh, I know that one, uh, help me out with the first one, Pastor, it's 
Michelle Azariah. Who's the other one? <laughs> Sa exactly. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. So the, the thing is, okay, on the, those three, they told Nebuchadnezzar, you do what you want, king. We are servants of the most high God. And they, even though they were thrown into the furnace, they were able to stand in the fire. And even the, uh, the you know, the, the, the son of God was with them as well. Okay. And it stood in the, in the fire with them. And the thing is, there is something about that when you say we are servants of the most high God. And that's important that, that you know, we identify that and we say, you know, how, what are we, our identity, but we are servants of the most high God. Okay. And so to follow after Jesus, I have to read John chapter 12, verse 26 it says this, if anyone serves me, okay, he must follow me where I am. There my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, no, sorry, serve me, the Father will honor him. Okay, in John uh, 12, 26. And so the thing is, is it's understanding uh, of Christ. You have to understand that he's a servant, okay? I mean, here it is, the one who created everything, God Almighty, God Most High, and he shows his disciples a lesson in humility. Here is the one who spoke and the world came to be. He is the one who brought life and the things, okay, or the, those okay, were things until they became people, right? He took dust and breathed life into it. And now here he is dressing as a servant and kneeling before his disciples, washing their feet. God most high was washing the feet of his creation. And you know, when you see that, you're like, oh my goodness. Every time that we see Hollywood depict anyone that's mighty and strong, they are above and they have all these people working for them and they're too mighty to do it themselves. You know what I mean? Because they're so powerful and everyone fears them and whatnot, right? But you know, here is Christ who took the part of a servant so that we can learn. And I will say this, you can't get any higher up on the ladder than God. And if God had the heart and of, a, of a servant, how much more should we? How much more should we? And so he, he was our, our example. And so when, and when you think about washing feet, it was funny, I was talking to the pastor. I was aware of this a little while ago. And I said, one of these days we have a feet washing service. And if we ever did, everyone, we'd have to tell you in advance. And then you guys would all perfume your feet. You'd get out that little scaler thing, take all the calluses off and the bunions and the corns and all the other grody things in between your toes. And you, know, you would file it all down and you would make your feet nice and smooth, lotion and everything. And then so when you went for that bush washing service, it would be like, look at that. Those are some awesome feet. But that wasn't the case. In the time, uh, during the times of uh, when the disciples were, people didn't always know where to throw their garbage or to do other things. And so the disciples, and of course, you know, and even in the time of Christ, and people in, in general as well, they wore sandals. And when you wore sandals, it, caused, it was like leather, and leather causes your feet to smell, okay? And among other things, you walk in, Lord knows what, okay? And then you would, uh, at the end of the day, you consider, your, your feet were considered unclean, man. They're nasty. You're walking through all kinds of stuff. And so at the end of the day, you know, when you had anyone wash your feet, that was the lowest person on the totem pole, okay? You know, you, you, know, you, 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 had, you, had, you had your, you know, uh, the ones who clean the house, right? And then you had uh, the, the ones that would, uh, you know, attend uh, to uh, uh, the, the general uh, upkeep and what, cooking the food and things like that, attending the children and so forth, right? And then you get to the other ones, you know, who attended their, their uh, the, 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 the grandfather's, the grandmother's life, right? And then you get all that. And then it finally, when you get down to the bottom, there's the foot washer. And the foot washer was at the very low, okay? I mean, a lot of times when you when the foot washer was there, you didn't even hardly recognize the foot washer's existence. You know, it was like, 
Oh, you got the worst job in the world, buddy. Go ahead, wash my feet. Oh man, that's nasty. And that's exactly how it would be. And Jesus was trying to show us the very lowest position is what he took as a servant. And you know, it's interesting because we as 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 uh, as people today, we think that we deserve this certain respect. I will be a servant of God, but it's got to come with perks, right? But I will be a servant of God, but, but only if this and if that. And, it, and it's, it's got to have some things. And, and Lord, we have to negotiate the terms, God. And we have to, you know, work on this and work on that. You know, I can't have, you know, too low of a job. And I don't know, you know, kind of one that's in the middle. I don't mind helping out people, but you know, as long as it's not too grody, I don't want to change diapers or anything like that. You know what I mean? We kind of set terms, right? And about what we want to do and what we don't want to do. And Jesus, right to the bottom. I mean, there is no job that is too, you know, that, that, that is, 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 is beyond God, okay? And he took the lowest of the low so that he would show us how we need to be. And the, and the thing is, is, is when we are servants of God, and, and please understand, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to say this, you know, in any kind of offensive way, but we don't really have the right to dictate terms to God on how he uses us. We are the servants. He is God. And a lot of times we will always, like I said, we, we dictate terms. We want everything, you know, when we said, well, Lord, I get a say in this and I get a vote and I get this and this and that. No, you don't. That's a part of trust and obey or there's no other way, right? Be happy in Jesus other than what? Trust and obey. Were you reading my notes in my office today? <laughs> Not really. Because like, I've, been, I've been studying on a sermon for three weeks from now, and this is like you're reading my notes. When I go to the bathroom, it's the Lord. Lord. My office. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. So, that's all. I, I, I just, all I do is just, just say what God tells me to say. And, and, the, and the thing is, is you know, is we, we dictate terms to God, even when it comes to people. I will do, I will work with this group and this group, but not this group. I will do this, 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 Lord, but no way. These people hurt me. Not going to happen. Okay? I'm not, I have nothing to do with them. Okay? Even, you know, you know, you know uh, uh, parents, right? You know, I mean, well, Lord, I'll do this and this, that, but not with my own family, man. That's out. I'm not touching that one, Lord. A 10-foot pole. Okay? And, and we, we have this, this attitude that we dictate terms to God. And, and the thing is, is, is folks, is, is as a servant, the best way to describe it is exactly what Jeremiah says, okay? And I, and I, want, I want to read that. This, this, this is in Jeremiah 18, 1, 6. And I want you to grasp this because in understanding this, you'll understand how God expects us as his servants. And you get a clear picture. Stuff like this is in the Bible. It's not in there by accident. It's not because Jeremiah was feeling creative one day. He decided to pen down something cool. No, it's because this is what God wants us to know, Okay. This is what the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down at once to the potter's house. There I will reveal my words to you. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working away at the wheel. But the jar that he was making from the clay became flawed in the potter's hand. So he made it into another jar, as it seemed right for him to do. The word of the Lord came to me, house of Israel. Can I, not, can I not treat you as this potter treats his clay? This is the Lord's declaration. Just like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. See, God wants us to know. See, he's the potter, we're the clay. And then the thing is, is as clay, we, we, we like to, we like to have the set instructions and we're like, hi God, Hi, um, hi, it's me, Clay, and before you do, here's a blueprint. I'd like you to follow this if you don't mind. And it's like we did take yeah. terms to God because I'm like, well, you know, I mean, God, uh, I mean, hey, 
I mean, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I'm using, I'm using some, some terms here. I hope everybody knows what understands what this is, right? If you understand in, in the 1700s, 1800s and stuff, you know, I am, Lord, I want to be a vessel that is used, okay, to serve food. I want to have, you know, nice fruit. I want to have a gold edge around me. I want to be the centerpiece on the table. Please don't make me the chamber pot. Any of you know what a chamber pot is? You know what I'm talking about. But God decides what he's going to use you for. And the thing is, is that we, in our society today, judge by what God makes people into. That one is higher than the other. One is more decorative. But maybe one might be more decorative, but one might be stronger and thicker and can handle more. A, a, a larger urn that, that was a that cast back then that they had that contained water that, that those kind of that they were huge jugs that, that God you know that Jesus when he made water into wine they're not much to look at but they could contain a lot of water and they're very strong and they last a long time a lot of us we want to be the fine china we want to be the one that's at the centerpiece of the table with all the gold decoration and flowers and all the prettiness and shine pretty and all that but god decides what we are and the thing is is it's because of that we have these uh, ideas and concepts in our head of what success in the lord is okay we then we go and we say you're an ugly old jar me i'm a pretty cut Ooh. right and and that is not it I mean, and, and and god is like I don't think any less of that teacup than I don't think that jar. Because when I want a large amount of water, I know exactly where I'm going to go get it. That teacup can only, you know, it ain't even already slaked my thirst. That's it. I need the teacup to go into that and then get that and then and drink and drink and, you know what I mean, to get as much as you need, right? And, you know, and, 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 and some of us in the, uh, the, the pattern of, of our thinking, we think that it is greater, okay, that we be, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, priceless vase rather than the cutting board, all right? I mean, the cutting board goes through, you know, kind of difficult, right? And you hear the cutting board, you're like, oh, this is not really fun, <laughs> you know, and you're going through all this. And the thing is, is God will make you what he makes you into, and you will be the best one that there is of what he wants. Because God knows if every one of us, okay, we go, hey, I'll tell you what, in toolboxes, hammers are awesome. If God had a whole box of hammers, what would he be able to do when he wants to cut a piece of wood? What would he be able to do if he wanted to uh, tighten up a screw or a bolt or, or, or drill a hole? He'd just have to get that hammer and whack a hole into it. He'd get the hammer and then try to, to tighten the bolt. It won't happen. That is why we need to rejoice in what God has created us into and not dictate terms to God. Because the Lord knows. He's like, Ooh, I'm missing this in my toolbox. I really need a ruler. So guess what? He's going to go and he's going to make you do a tape measure so that you can do that measuring that needs to be done, right? You know the old saying, right? Measure twice. You know what? Yeah, measure twice, cut once. So, you know, and he wants to make sure it's not a precise measurement. If everyone was hammers, that one that wouldn't be effective at all. But you see, again, like I said last week, we have to unlearn the things that we, that we learn. Okay? We, we have to stop judging. That's why the Bible talks about, you know, that a toe and an eye and then, you know, and the hand. Hey, one's not greater than the other, right? You know who's the greatest out of all the tools? It's the carpenter holding the toolbox. And that's Christ. That's who's greatest. And we follow him. And if Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to be the putty knife. And I'm scraping the, the, the gook off of the bottom of something. I mean, that's kind of what the foot washer is, okay? And if Jesus says that, and he's the example, who are we to judge? Okay, and who are we to just, just tell God anything different? And that's it. It's important that, that we get that 
the, the society today and of the Western world out of our heads and realize that God needs every one of us and creates what he needs according to his divine purpose and will. Our job isn't to question God. Our job is to trust and obey, okay? Our job is to obey. That is the reason why, even the word of God, even David, okay, when, and it actually wasn't David, it was, I believe it was one of the prophets talked to David and said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because if you are able and pliable in God's hand, then God is going to use you where he needs to use you, when he needs to use you, okay? And you want to, because when you dictate terms to God, you, you're just holding up the show, <laughs> you know, because you're just sitting here and like, oh, Lord, this is this. And God's like, oh, okay, fine. I really need this to happen. But yeah, you know, uh, it's like you see, you know, with the Lord, I want to be a power drill. Power drills are awesome. I love it. You know, what, 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 uh, I'm trying to think what those, the, those black, those black and yellow ones are. They, um, I, I can't think of the name right now. But anyway, everyone wants to be one of those. You know, they're not, not YOB, but you know, it's, it's one of those. And they're, they're like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're, they're, yeah, what? DeWalt. DeWalt. Everyone wants to be a DeWalt, man. Interchangeable battery. <laughs> Does everything, right? And God's like, well, that's nice. But what I really need is a pencil so that I can learn what I, what, what, uh, the, 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 uh, the steps as we go. I need that. I don't need to have a power drill doing that. And so we're, and they're like, oh, man, I want a pencil. Big drill. And you know, and, and, when we, and when we do that, we're holding up God's progress because we want to dictate terms to God. And so it's important that we remember, okay? Obedience, pliable. We want to be moldable in the Lord's hand. God, you choose to do what you want. I will follow. I will obey. Okay, praise God. To be useful, clay has to be pliable. Once it is made into a vessel, its usefulness is still subject to the direction of the potter. Okay, it's important to, to, to remember that. Okay, so when, when, when God works through you, again, see, as a servant, we're, we're, we're used to going to them, okay, high learn. What's, what's my instructions for the day? And then I want you to go out in the field and you're going to go and you're going to harvest up these grapes. And then afterwards, you're going to bring them back. And, 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 and we like to hear that kind of stuff. That's what we're used to, right? We see a lot of examples. That's what servants do. You, 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 go do this, go do this, go do that. God doesn't work that way. It's a little different. Remember, God is developing you as you go. So God is going to say, I want you to go in the field and I'll be right there with you. So then God goes out in the field and you say, what are we doing today? Ooh, harvesting. Awesome. Lord, that's great. Right? And then it's even like, like uh, we all look at, everyone likes to be the harvesters. Okay? No one wants to be the person out in the heat of the sun tilling the soil. That is not a fun job. Okay? It's easier, you know, it's nice when you're collecting up the grapes, right? And you go in your, in your condition comfort and whatnot, you know, later on. Um, I was noticing that. Someone was talking to me about it. There's this uh, the over in Barwick, right? It's the season right now. There's a wonderful berry pit going on, right? Everyone's all are yeah, cool. So anyway, there are ones harvesting strawberries. Okay, those strawberries are wonderful. And you see, I love it in Facebook. Everyone's all like, uh, all posing with their strawberries, holding their bucket, you know, all that. But what they didn't see was the person that was toiling to get those seeds to grow, watering them, taking care of them, when it was nothing but an empty field. And then you're sitting there and you're like, well, nothing is special yet. No one wants to be in an empty field, right? You know, digging up the, the furrows, planting the, the, the seed, whatever, you know, going. <laughs> you know, there's no color, there's no berries, there's nothing there, there's no pizzazz. But you know, you don't, you don't see people posing that in an empty field. But the thing is, is this, if you don't do the work in the empty field, those berries aren't going to come forth. And that has to be done. And the, one, and the thing I hate the most, oh, man, when I was a kid, we used to, we had a big garden, right? I hate pulling weeds, man. I will be the first one to admit it. I, okay, everyone, even by recording, whatever, this can go on record. I hate pulling weeds. Okay, so, uh, so when you pull weeds, man, 
They're tough. And sometimes they have thistles. Thistles are the worst. I mean, you know, they, they bite back. So you gotta have to have, have gloves and stuff, right? And you pull weeds and everything. And you're just thinking, oh my goodness, the endless weed. But if you don't do the weeding, the berries don't come around. And sometimes the Lord says to you in the heat of the day, I'd like you to go pull weeds. And that's when we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a nasty job, God. No, 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 no. I don't have to pull weeds. My back. Oh, I got this. I got that. I got that. Right? Like Moses, right? Moses, God tells him, I want you to go speak for me. I, I, I can't talk too good, Lord. No, no, can't do it. I'm telling you, you don't understand, God. I got this problem with my speech. And then so the Lord's like, fine. I got Aaron. Now go. See, the thing is, is this. You give God excuses, you will find a way to get over those. Okay? My biggest thing I always tell people is this. Do not be Jonah. Jonah is the biz, biggest example of dictating to God. Okay? Jonah comes out. Da, 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 and, we're talking about. and then so God goes, okay, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. Ooh! Jonah's excited, right? And he's thinking, Nineveh, that's where the Assyrians are. Those people, skin people alive. They're nasty people. All right, I'll go there. And then I know it's going to be rain fire down from heaven. And so, oh, yeah, Jonah is happy. But then God, then he starts realizing, God starts talking about mercy. Ooh, no fireworks, God? We're not going to slay the enemy? Huh, that, that has oppressed my people and hurt people and all that. We're not going to get revenge, Lord? And then, and then, no. and then Jonah's like, well, I'm not going to and I'm going to get on a boat, and I'm going to travel far, far away. And you know what? And God's like, you ain't going back home. And so eventually the storm came up, and God even, like, let on to all the sailors on there what the trouble was. And they all came to Jonah, hit you, threw him overboard, and a fish. And so guess what? While Jonah was in the fish, God got to talk to him and say, now, I, would you care to dictate terms to me again, Jonah? <laughs> And he's like, no. I mean, he's like, you know, the slime, right? Whatever the fish eats, you know, comes through with the, oh, 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 you know. And here he is in the belly of a whale, not a fun place to be. But then he gets vomited up. I, I kid you not, vomited. And anyone, by the way, when you have whale vomit, I was, I was reading some research on this, right? So here is, uh, when you get whale vomit, it actually kind of bleaches your skin a little bit, okay? So imagine. Jonah is really pale, okay? He's probably got splotches on him and whatnot. Maybe, you know, he's, he's definitely got a reminder the next time he looks in the mirror, don't argue with God. So Jonah, can you imagine this, right? The whale comes up. Where he's supposed to be in the first place? Nineveh. Blah! Barfs him up. And so here's a good bunch of guys that are out there probably fishing and whatnot, right? And then all of a sudden, this heap of seaweed rises up from the beach. And you know, walking along, and, he, and they're, they're seeing this uh, like a hideous monster. They're like, ah! And then all of a sudden, he pulls off the seaweed and vomit and dead fish and bones and everything. And he goes, repent. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that scene? I mean, it would be like, whoa! And, I'm, and I'm, by the way, folks, if you know whale vomit, you know, like that, it stinks to high heaven, man. It's really foul. And so here, throughout all this, here comes Jonah in, in the sea. And Jonah is thinking maybe God is, after Jonah gives the big message God wants, he goes up on the hillside and thinking, maybe God's going to change his mind and destroy everything. It doesn't happen. And he gets the tree and he, you know, and then the tree gives him shade and that goes away. He's upset. And then Moses is angry at God taking away that. And God's like, I built this tree. What are you, how, who are you to tell me? You know, you care more about the tree than you do people, okay? And then Jonah learns a big lesson in humility. And here's the thing. Had Jonah simply have gone to Nineveh, all that time would have been wasted. He wouldn't have had to, to have the trip in the belly of the whale. He could have went by a boat, water, but a nice trip and everything, right? But instead, he had to argue with God. And here's the thing, folks. When you, as a believer in Christ, you say, Lord, I am yours, every part of me. He's going to hold you to that, okay? 
but as I was talking to a, a pastor a, a few days ago, and we're saying that sometimes when we sing our praise songs, it, it turns us into liars, right? Every part of me, Lord, is yours. And then you're like, nah, Lord, I'm this, right? And we wind up singing, that's how we sing songs, or are we lying to God? And so when we sing these praises, you know, it's important that, that we remember this. And, and, and we make this, this commitment to God. So when we tell God, I am the clay, you are the potter, right? I am the potter, you are the clay. Then that means that God has sovereign right to choose what you become. He has sovereign right to choose what, how that he's going to use you. And so that is what is really important to understand. And this is how, folks, this is how that you, you, we are able to walk with God. You know, when, when, when we see God working and we, and we dive in there and we're helping out and stuff, God is molding us and shaping us to what he wants us to be. So as we see God move and working and we help along, we are getting to uh, uh, be per, uh, uh, perfected, okay? And when we are being uh, honed and we are being designed to be in that tool God needs. So that, that, that to, as the Lord's work is done, it gets to be done better, okay? Another way to look at it is this, okay? You are a hose. A hose is just a hose, okay? And a hose, but a hose has, has purpose though. A hose directs where the water goes, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you carry through, right? The Lord directs where the water goes, okay? You're the hose that brings that. That, that, you know, power of God flows through, right? Uh, the, how the water flows through that hose, it goes to where it needs to go. And so as a hose for God, the Lord decides what plant or what is going to get water, or what's going to get done, or if he's going to use it to fill a tank or whatever. You're the hose. And we're, you're, you're, you're in God's hand and you're just like, Lord, I'm doing my best. Am I directing that through? Nothing's getting out of There's no blockage in this life. Perfect. Man, I'm the best hose I can be, man. And that's what you're doing. You're being the best hose that you can be. So that every ounce, every drop of what God is sending through gets to where it needs to go. And sometimes when we question God, we hold up the system. It's like a leaf or a chunk of mud that's caught in the hose. It's still, some of it's still trickling through. If you ever had that happen, you know what I'm talking about, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking down the holes and stuff like that, and you're like, where's that at? And then you're sitting there and you, and then you, you try to clear it out, and then you go, okay, turn on the water, full wax to see if we can blow that junk out, okay? And so we have to be sure that we don't have things that obstruct God's work. The biggest one of all is sin. And the enemy can use that and it can distract you to do uh, from doing what God wants you to do. And so that's why as a, a, a servant, just like, uh, well, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I was remembering uh, a song that you're singing there. Here's what you do when God says something to you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yeah. Okay? That is what we do. And God just tells us where he wants to go. And then we get to enjoy the ride and we get to experience. And he would say, wow, God, I'm better at this than I thought I would be. And the Lord knows you better than you know yourself. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move on to say, you have been operating from a disoriented approach to spiritual servanthood. This concept should change your perspective about serving God. You don't receive orders, then go and carry them out. To the best of your knowledge and ability, you relate to God. You respond to him and adjust your life to him so he will do what he wants to do through you. That is important to remember. Okay, praise God. And when we get to the, the next time, uh, we are going to... Uh, talk about Elijah and how Elijah and how he was a servant of God, okay? All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Lord, I love it. We are never disappointed. Whenever your presence is here, 
whenever, Lord God, you got out your lectern and your teaching, Lord, always good stuff comes out. And so, Lord, I pray that you will help us to digest and learn and, 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 and Lord, and to meditate on what we've learned today, Lord, and help us, God, to be the best servants that we can be. And the way that we become the best servants that we can be, Lord, is by being obedient, Lord God. And so I pray, Lord, that you will help us all and give us that heart of obedience, Lord, that, that says, God, you want us to jump how high? Where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do, Lord? And God, and there'll be no obstructions in the way so that your will may be accomplished for your glory, oh God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will teach every one of us that, Lord, as you work alongside us, God, as you uh, uh, work throughout our life, Lord, as you show us in your word these wonderful nuggets of truth and these things, Lord God, that build us up and train us to be effective for your glory. I pray, Lord God, that you will help us every day, Lord, and help us also, Lord God, to read your word, to hear from you, Lord, and to know exactly what we should be doing and to look for those opportunities when we see you working and work right alongside of you, oh God. And as we do, Lord, you'll teach us, you'll strengthen us, you'll build us up, Lord God, and you will educate us, Lord, so that we are experts at doing your will. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray, Lord God, for your lead, guiding, and protection to go without, to go to everyone, Lord God, to go with everyone. And Lord, I pray that the joy of the Lord will be our strength. In your holy name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.